So usually, I don't give talks on personal matters. Um, it's not really my thing. You know, my personal life is really my personal life. A picture of my dog has never appeared on any one of our websites. But this, this I thought was really interesting because this list was really for me. And when I built that website, I didn't think anybody else other than myself and my mother would go there. So to shorten the title a little bit, I called it 19 debts. It's the idea that these are the things that I owe myself to do uh, throughout my life. And if you guys don't know who I am, I, I run this company called the Cheeseburger Network. Um, we run the fail blog, I can ask Cheeseburger, fail book, and you can see the photos of the types of stuff that we do. You know, very high brow stuff, you know. <laughs> high art is what we focus on. And usually my graphs look like this. It's like, woohoo, look at us, we're doing great, up and to the right, all through to, you know, 2018, whoever, you know. That's what we do, right? We talk about business, and we talk about how we got uh, the results that we did and how we're going to get there and what we're doing as a company. But I thought this was a very intensely personal topic, and I had a really difficult time trying to come up with an idea as to how I'm going to tell you about my life goals and, and what the theme was. And I didn't really even think about that, so I had to actually go back and say, you know, what are the main themes that was running through my life? So I'm going to share that with you. So I wanted to say that these are the things that I had to accomplish, the 19 things that I had to do, right? Maybe not just Maybe it's not about like going to visit a place. Maybe it's not buying a plane ticket and arriving someplace and having fun. But these are things that I have to work towards to accomplish, right? These are challenges. These are goals. These are dreams. These are things that make me want to wake up in the morning and say, whose ass can I kick, <laughs> right? If it wasn't easy, I wouldn't, if it was easy, I wouldn't put it on this list. It was all because it was difficult. Maybe because I had a personal fear, maybe because I, you know, really don't like doing that, but I know that it's necessary that I do it. Or maybe it's something that other people haven't done before, right? And those things made the list. When I wrote this list of 19 things, and I didn't pick 19 as a number or anything, it just happened to be that way. When I picked this list, um, it was actually a lot longer, and I started removing the things that I felt were unnecessary. This was the, the editing process of my life goals. And if I could get, get it down to a manageable number of things I could remember, so that when I'm out there doing a speech, or when I'm out there thinking about my life, those things could stay in my mind. It had to be reasonable. So the first thing I did was created the have fun part, right? So this is a subconscious of me talking, and this is me going back and being Freud and, and re-psychoanalyzing why these things appeared on the list. So I said, you know, life is nothing if we don't enjoy some of it, right? I didn't, I wasn't born to the, on this planet just to work, right? I'm not some automaton. I know that if I die tomorrow, I will probably think, yeah, that was pretty fun. I'll do it again, right, if I could. So that list was first starting off with graduate with a bachelor's degree. And college was great. I went to Northwestern University and got a very proud B average. <laughs> I worked at a newspaper. Um, I did, you know, I worked at the college newspaper there and I you know, would go to sleep at 3 a.m. after putting the newspaper to bed, get up at noon, miss my first class. I think I calculated I'd miss a, an entire 24% of my class, 25% of my classes, which if you do the math correctly, is an entire year of college. So even though it took me four years to graduate, I kind of did it in three. <laughs> I won't go through the list line by line, but I'll, I'll highlight some of the really important things. And, and maybe the last part of this list is probably just as important, which is to sell a company for a profit, profit. I haven't been able to do that. And the first and the last really, to me, were correlated. I was the first in my family to graduate from college. I was actually the first in my family to ever even go to college. In my, in my, entire extended family. Um, I had immigrated here from Korea when I was 14 years old. Um, my, I, I am not, not only am I a child of immigrants, I am an immigrant. I remember going to high school and uh, getting after, uh, being done with uh, after school stuff, clubs and things like that, going home, eating dinner with my parents, leaving at 8 o'clock to go clean the warehouse at the IRS in Sacramento, California. And that's how we made our living. The whole three family of us would work and we you know, we got paid $2,500 a month, and that's, that's how we lived. And we lived in a one-bedroom apartment, and my parents slept out in the living room, and I slept in the bedroom. You know, I was an only child, which is pretty rare, um, being an immigrant family. You know, these are, these are intensely personal things that, that made me realize that having a bachelor's degree, even in 1999, and I can't tell you the temptation to drop out of college in 1999 to become Bill Gates, was so strong and so assured. 
God, if I drop out my junior year, guess what? I'm going to be rich. To escape that temptation was really difficult. I also had the dubious distinction of flunking out of one of my classes, which I am not so proud to say, um, which my parents were quite dismayed. But that made me realize that college was something I wanted to fight for. And um, I, I remember taking an extra load of classes to actually finish school uh, on time, because um, Northwestern wasn't cheap. So that led me to realize that accomplishing things really actually made me enjoy life. And that, that became a part of having fun was to actually build something. I was a builder. I wanted to create. Uh, that probably meant that I was never going to go work for a big corporation for any big length of time. And I knew that about myself when I graduated from school. So, in order to sell a company for profit, you have to start a company. So I did it in 2000. 2000, right. Now that I have a college degree, what am I going to do? Burn somebody else's money, right? Raise money from a bunch of investors and go build an internet company, because I'm 22. <laughs> and I know the world. Yeah, it didn't really work out so well. 18 months later, it folded, and I was $40,000 in debt, right? It's a pretty hard struggle to get out of that. But this is part of having fun, right? Sometimes you go out on a you know, take your bicycle out and you uh, do a face plant. <laughs> it happens to all of us, right? That's okay. But to me, the, the practice of failure was important. Not that I wanted to fail, but getting up from it was incredibly important to being an entrepreneur. And that meant that if I could get up over and over and over again and teach other people in my company to get up after failing, we could one day sell a company for a profit. And then the next theme that ran through my goals was Help yourself. Seems a little self-serving, right? It's like, have fun, help yourself. Great. Well, what's the social part of all this? Well, I'll, I'll get to that. But help yourself is important. When I was in debt in 2001, I had 40 grand, I had really two choices. Declare bankruptcy, give that problem to the government or to the credit card companies, because come on, who the hell would give $40,000 of credit line to a college kid who just graduated, right? That's irresponsible. It's their fault. Or pay it off. Paying off was the much, much harder decision. But it was the act of finding a way to pay off that debt that was the lesson, that was worth more than the $40,000 I spent. Right? The discipline that it took, the, sorry, <laughs> getting a little choked up. There's nothing harder than wake up in the morning, look at a mirror, and see a failure. There's nothing harder to realize that you've let people down, let your family down who put money in you, let your friends down who you hired. But that kind of struggle, getting out of that struggle, means that you've become a person with character and moral values and a person who has a center that cannot be shaken. Sometimes in this job, I get a lot of flack for things I say because I will go against the contrary. I will tell you that the world is wrong because we're doing something else and doing it right for ourselves. I'll tell you that it works for us. Maybe it won't work for you. But when the world comes to you and says, you are an idiot, Maybe we are, <laughs> and sometimes, often, we are. When the world tells you you're wrong, and you know you're right, that kind of experience helps you stand there and take the heat. That's what struggle is all about. It's not the pain. It's a lesson learned on how to get through that pain. And it turned out to be a pretty good decision for me. That financial discipline allowed me to build a company that started in 2007 called the Cheeseburger Network. And in 2008, we turned an annual profit for the very first time. In the middle of the biggest recession in, this, in our lifetime, we eked out a profit. And that meant a great deal to us. Because that meant we weren't going to have to raise another round and, and have to lay off people if we didn't. That meant we were self-sustaining. That meant we weren't a burden on society. So if I could help myself get back on my feet, and if I can help people who are unemployed get a job and find a way to make a living, we helped ourselves and we weren't a burden on someone else. 
And the last thing on this list, which to set aside enough money to never have to work for the rest of your life, means the same thing. If I can take care of myself, then I can afford to take care, of, take care of others. And that's the last part of my goals, which is to help the world. If you can have fun taking care of yourself, then the next logical conclusion for me is to help someone who deserves it. Or, or maybe they don't deserve it, maybe help someone see that they too can have fun and help themselves. And when, when they recognize that they can help the world. So in 2008, as my company was making its first annual profit, I invested in none of the startup. And that was a very proud moment for me. Not because I thought I knew what I knew about investing. I really still don't know anything about investing. I know how to run a cat picture website. <laughs> <laughs> but because I, you know, I thought I could take a risk. I really could, and, I, and I, by taking this risk, I wasn't going to put myself or my family or my peers in jeopardy. Right? It was an act of commerce that was firmly rooted in logic. And that was good. And that felt really fantastic. There's three other things on this list, and I think this list to me is somewhat incomplete. And the 19 things may grow as I start to you know, wipe some of these things off the list. But I wanted to be a millionaire. I wanted to have at least a million dollars worth of net worth. And after that, after being able to say, you know, I can live on something Maybe not a grand amount of money, but maybe something. I, I, after I can take care of my family for the rest of my life, I can donate a million dollars to charity. And that number is important because if a million dollars will change my life, a million dollars spent socially to help other people will change hundreds, thousands, if not millions of people's lives. I just ran into the company, uh, an actual organization called Vitana, which is a, a microfinance organization for helping uh, students across the globe, and I thought, you know, my idea was, I thought I could use some of my charitable donations to help one person uh, go to college, and there are now mechanisms that allow me to finance a loan where student loans aren't available to help lots of people go to college. The social impact of my dollar today, because of the efforts of other entrepreneurs like me, can go much further, right? The idea that one person can change the world is possible to today, than ever before because of technology, because of the way we are connected, because other people like me have goals about what they want to do with their life. And our world supports that. Entrepreneurs and people who love this idea of democratization of information are transforming even charitable giving and the fact that our reach can be far greater than those who are around us. The last thing was help work on a political campaign. Uh, so I went to journalism school. Like I have a degree in journalism. I can copy edit your papers if you'd like. Um, I can spell things correctly if, when needed. Uh, <laughs> and when I was a journalism student, the, 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 the holy grail was to either go cover a war, which uh, sounds exciting, or go cover another war called politics. And I thought, you know, politics is a lot closer to home and less bullets. So I would love to have worked on a political campaign or covered it and, and something like that. And I, and I thought, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a noble goal. And uh, I don't know why I still want to do that, but it just seems like a lot of fun. I just, I just read Game Changer, and I thought, oh, boy, what a, what a great insight. And um, it's just kind of random, but it's there, right? Because I feel like it's, it's helping the world to, to be uh, politically active. The culmination of all these things, all these goals, is to me, uh, quote unquote, write a book. I don't want to write like a children's book. Maybe, maybe I do. I don't, I don't have any kids yet. Um, I don't know what kind of a book I want to write. But if I live a, a life worth living uh, or worth writing about, I can either write something about me or something about others because I can see into their life their struggle, their goals, their ambitions, their themes in their lives. And that's a life worth living if it allows you to see into the hearts and minds of other people. And all those experiences that I want to gather through my goals, if it, you know, learning to fly, learning to sail, you know, owning a home outright, have, knowing that what that feeling feels like gives me insight into the soul of the people who are around me. Because I can connect with you. I can understand 
I can walk in your shoes. I know what it's like to have a mortgage. I know what it's like to be upside down in a mortgage. I know what that feels like. I also know what it's like to show, to have the rarity of having to pay off a mortgage. The knowing that spectrum of human emotion, knowing the spectrum of human experience gives me a, a better perspective into everyone's lives in this room in one small and important way. And to me, if, it, if, if my life ended and I was able to accomplish these 19 things, I think I'd be uh, pretty happy to do that. So this is my Twitter, and this is where the list is uh, located, and, and maybe I'll run into people who will influence me to add things or subtract things and change them. But um, those are my 19 things. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Scott.